As a Kirsty Alley addict madly in love with her, I'm slightly heartbroken by the rating for Look Who's Talking Now on IMDb. It only has 4.4 out of 10, which is not great. And I only recently watched this. I watched this last week. I'd seen Look Who's Talking and Look Who's Talking to quite a while ago and I think I watched them pretty much back to back so I thought I need a little bit of a break with Look Who's Talking Now and it turns out that break was about six years and then I started watching Cheers, fell back in love with Kirsty Alley and decided to give this final in the trilogy a watch and I have to say it was really good fun. I don't think it's as good as the previous two but I did enjoy it so if you haven't seen the first two films, just very briefly. In the first film, the Kirsty Alley and John Travolta play Molly and James, and in the first film, Molly is pregnant, and we get the internal monologue of the fetus, and then the baby is born, and we get the internal monologue of the baby. And it's brilliant having these camera angles from the baby's perspective and what the baby's thinking. It's great fun, it's hilarious. In the second film, there is a sister. In this third film, I assumed there'd be another baby, but actually there isn't. There are two dogs, Rox and Daphne. The story behind Rox's name is hilarious and absolutely worth watching the film for just for that. But, you know, Mike wants a dog and Julie wants a dog and somehow they end up with two dogs by mistake. One is a scruffy mutt and one is a little pampered princess. And there's also a subplot running through there where James is having to work away a lot and is putting a strain on Molly and the family. So on the one hand, that gives it quite a serious note, but when we get the thoughts of the dogs, sometimes the internal monologues of the dogs, as they're just thinking everything out loud, kind of, but also, when they interact with one another and they speak to each other, that is also very, well, as you'd imagine, it's absolutely hilarious. So, as I said, it's not, it's not as good as the first two, but the dogs are adorable and it's really enjoyable. Mikey has, has really grown up into this lovely little boy and Julie is such a treat. I mean, to watch her, Tabitha Lupian... To watch her on screen is hilarious. She was such an amazing little actress with the best facial expressions. There's also one point, this isn't really a spoiler, but she's watching Peter Pan and then she tries to fly and tries to jump off furniture and it's never occurred to me how dangerous that film can actually be. That's just a side note. There's also, um, they sing a particular Christmas song as a family and that's one of my favourite scenes out of the entire trilogy and... Kirsty Alley in that moment was so adorable and I absolutely loved her and I am biased and I am smitten and I do love everything she's in but this film I honestly thought was very entertaining and it wasn't I don't like watching films with dogs or cats because I cry I get upset but actually this one wasn't as emotional as it could be so I, I managed to hang on in there and it all turned out fine as a bonus, the voices are Danny DeVito as Rox and Diane Keaton as Daphne, and they're brilliant. Fantastic voice actors, anyway. But they really work and fit well with the dogs. The development of the narrative is great. The, you know, it's funny. It's not laugh out loud funny. There's a heartwarming moment with Santa. There's a lot of emotion in there. You would probably feel every emotion. There's one character who you will absolutely hate and you're meant to hate her and you will feel every emotion possible and I think it's quite a powerful powerful film that's not to say it's a masterpiece it's not a film that's going to go down in history as one of the greatest creations of the 20th century it was released in 1993 when I was one years old but it's great fun and if you've seen any of the previous ones give it a watch I know quite a lot of people have watched it for Travolta and have not been that impressed because he's not exactly Danny Zuko. But I think he's good in it. And obviously I'm addicted to Kirstie Alley. So for me it's really lovely and really sweet. And I definitely think you should watch it. If you've seen it, let me know which is your favourite in the trilogy. The first one's brilliant because it's innovative. 
The second one is great because it's found its footing, it knows what works, it knows what's funny. The third one is just, you know, it's comfortable because you're used to it, you know the family, you've watched them grow up and it's just like a little extension of that. So I don't know what my personal favourite would be of the three, but I do have to think that that Christmas song is one of my favourite moments in all three. Uh, yeah, Look Who's Talking Now is a good film.